G'day guys, welcome back to the True Footy YouTube channel as we approach the start of the BBL season. In fact, as you're watching it, it starts tonight with a game between the Brisbane Heat and the Melbourne Stars, which I will be live streaming here on the True Footy YouTube channel. So I've been trying to do my best to get some preview content out with respect to each individual team. I think by now I've got six out of the eight teams done. I couldn't quite get them all done in time, but I wanted to get my predictions out uh, for the first game of the year. So like I said, I've done uh, individual videos on six out of the eight squads. The only two I missed were the Hobart Hurricanes and the Sydney Sixers. Uh, in those videos, I kind of just profile um, the changes to squads for teams, had a crack at predicting their best 11. Uh, and today I'm gonna try and take what I've learned throughout this process, because there's a lot of moving parts, and try and have a crack at predicting what the table or the ladder will be at the end of this BBL 13. Now it's tough, it's tricky for a number of reasons. First of all, I am, I'm not a cricket guru or anything like that. Um, I am just doing this for a bit of fun, to be honest, and see how, how dramatically wrong I get it by the end of the tournament. Um, the second reason is, you know, it's T20 cricket and because it's a short format, you get weird and wacky results, which means the, the strength of lists or, or squads, it doesn't really matter that much. And there's also like so many new players in each squad and further to that availability considerations that make this incredibly hard to predict. But I'm going to have a crack anyway. So I'm going to predict the ladder, um, all eight teams starting from bottom to first. Before I get into it, if you don't mind, if you do me a favor and consider subscribing to the channel if you're wanting some big Bash League content this summer. And of course, we are primarily an AFL channel as well. So if you like either of those things, subscribe to the channel. All right, let's start with last place. And uh, this is controversial maybe. I mean, whoever I put last, there's gonna be uh, some complaints about that. But I'm gonna put the Adelaide Strikers in last place. So slipping one spot from where they finished last year, which was seventh. Uh, look, they've made some changes to their squad. So they've added Darcy Short, they've got Brendan Doggett, Basley uh, from the Brisbane Heat, Jamie Overton signed as well, and David Payne. So there's some pretty good ins. Peter Siddle went to the Renegades, uh, and they lost Colin de Grandom as well. But I think if I just look at their their 11, their ideal 11, you know, there's Chris Lynn, and then there's the two shorts at the top order, and uh, Jamie Overton could be a, um, a pretty good impact player as well. He's got a pretty good strike rate. Uh, the bowling attack is fine. There's no Rashid Khan this year. So, um, you know, in terms of spinning option, Cameron Boyce is their best. Uh, but I do, I will say that I do like their bowling, their seam bowling options here in uh, Wes Agar, Henry Thornton, and David Payne. I think that's going to be a little bit, bit of an underrated mix. But, you know, they've got uh, Alex Carey in their squad. They've got Travis Head. You take out those two players who are probably not going to feature for them this year. And I think the squad runs a little thin. So it's just kind of assessing them on their depth. I don't know if they've got it uh, to really push for the four, to be honest. Then in seventh spot, I've got these two teams flipped around uh, from last year's ladder, and I've got the Melbourne Stars, who, uh, again, there's been a lot of changes to their, their squad this summer. They've got Sam Harper. That's a good signing from the Renegades. Joel Paris, Scott Boland will come in, but again, subject to test availability. They've got Stekety. They've got Harris Ralph, who, who should hopefully be available for most of the tournament. Osama Mir. Uh, and then they've got Liam Dawson, who's available for the first three games, and then he'll be replaced by Imad Wasim after Boxing Day. In terms of who they lost, they lost Liam Hatcher, Zamp has gone to the Renegades. Joe Clark, that's a big loss. He's gone to the Renegades as well. Trent Bolt from last year. And, um, you know, you might have seen as well, they drafted Harry Brook with the second overall pick in the draft. And then he pulled out uh, due to workload issues as well. So I do think this team's got some really good hitting power. Obviously, they've got Glenn Maxwell. Uh, they've got Stoinis as well, who we know on his day can be quite a good hitter. Uh, and they've got some good bowling options in the top seven as well, because Maxwell is just coming off a pretty good tournament uh, from the World Cup. Uh, I do like their fast bowling options. There's, there's a real strength there. Ralph's good uh, from what I've seen of him. Coulter Nile as well had a pretty good tournament last year. Paris and Stekety. But I think overall the batting depth or lack thereof is what's going to cost Melbourne this tournament. And I don't think they'll go deep. In sixth spot, I've got the Sydney Thunder, uh, who I think finished fourth in last year's tournament. Uh, look, they've had a pretty good signing in Cam Bancroft, like, considering how good he was last year. But the, the problem that works against them is that he's had such a, Sheffield, a good Sheffield Shield season so far that he's probably going to be in the Australia squad. So I do think their hopes do rest on him, but he's probably their, their biggest signing. They've also got Zaman Khan, Liam Hatcher, and a couple of uh, other young prospects. They lost Brendan Doggett, Joel Davies, Sam Whiteman, Riley Rousseau, Fazal Haq Faruqi, Usman Kadir, and Ben Cutting. So probably a little bit more going out than in, which is sort of my justification for them slipping down the table a little bit. Again, it is hard to predict. I think other than their, other than Alex Hales, their batting lineup does look a little bit weak, and it was kind of a weakness last year, to be fair, uh, in the sense that no individuals really made, went on to make big scores and average lots. You know, there was uh, lots of averages in the 20s. 
In fifth spot, I've got the Brisbane Heat. This is actually where they finished last year. However, uh, in, under last year's rules, they would have they've obviously made the finals. They went all the way to the, the grand final. But on this occasion, with the changed rules, this means that they would miss the finals. But anyway, um, you know, only a couple of ins for them that I can see. Paul Walter and Jack Wood come into the squad and they lose Basley to the Adelaide Strikers. Steckerty, Sam Hain, that's a massive loss. He's gone to the Hobart Hurricanes as a Sam Heaslett. So again, like their best 11 looks fantastic when you include Usman Kawaja and Manus Labashain, but both will be available for one at best two games. So I think the squad depth uh, probably is going to be a little bit exposed in this particular team. Michael Nisa obviously had a great tournament last year. I think they relied on him quite a bit. Um, and I do think the recruitment of Sam Billings is a good one. But overall, uh, yeah, I think they'll be lucky to finish fifth, to be honest. Now let's talk about my finalists. First of all, I've got the Hobart Hurricanes sliding into fourth spot. Uh, and they've been pretty active with their squad changes. So to cover who they've got in, Peter Hatsoglu from the Scorchers, Chris Jordan from the Sydney Sixers. Uh, he's obviously English. Sam Hain, great recruit there. Corey Anderson as well, the Kiwi uh, bowling all-rounder, Heaslett, Chowdhury, and Liam Guthrie from the Brisbane Heat. Uh, they've also lost Joel Paris, Darcy Short, I don't think he had a great tournament last year, Scott Boland, probably not a big one, Zach Crawley's obviously not playing from this year, no Tim Payne, Asif Ali, Fahim Ashraf, Shadab Khan, and Jimmy Neesham. So a very, very different looking squad this year. But I do still quite like the, the strength of this team. You know, they've got Ben McDermott, they've got Matthew Wade, and Hayne, I think, is a big recruit. Tim David as well can be, you know, boom or bust a little bit, but he's a pretty good middle order hitter. Corey Anderson as well, um, for a while, held the ODI record for fastest century. So another guy who can probably bat mid to late order and hit it well. And some good bowling options in Ellis, and, and Dooley had a good tournament last year as well. Um, so overall, I think the, the Hurricanes are balanced enough and most importantly, don't quite have the same availability concerns as other squads. In third spot, I've got the reigning champions, the Perth Scorchers. Um, could they go higher? Sure. I'm trying to guess from the outside. Uh, they've signed Zach Crawley from England, which is a good recruit. Laurie Evans also rejoins, um, and Sam Whiteman as well comes back from the Thunder, I think it was. They lost Cam Bancroft. That's going to suck. But again, like I said, in, with the Thunder, he might be playing show, uh, for the Australian team, or he might be in the squad and not playing in the BBL anyway. Faf Duplessis is also out. No Cam Green. That's been confirmed. And Peter Hatsoglu, as I previously mentioned. So overall, I think the Scorchers have obviously done a great job over the years of remaining competitive, even when their best players aren't available. You know, Mitch Marsh is probably going to be in the Australian team. Uh, but overall, I think there's there's some good middling depth there. And I mean, like Aaron Hardy's kind of having a breakout sort of patch of his career and he's going to be a key player for him. Ashton Turner as well, you know, is a legend. What I will say is the Scorchers' strength actually is probably their bowling attack. Um, you know, Berendorf is, was really good in India. Um, Jai Richardson also had a really good tournament. I think he had 15 wickets from seven games last year, which is outstanding. So if they can cultivate that advantage, they will be a absolute force to be reckoned with and obviously could go back to back. But uh, I'm going to bet on third at the moment. In second spot, perhaps generously, I've got the Melbourne Renegades, um, who again have seen some changes to their squad. Their biggest in uh, would have to be Quinton de Kock. He adds some uh, you know, serious hitting power to that top order. They've also gotten Zampa from the Melbourne Stars. Nathan Lyon just signed a three-year deal with them, um, but again, he's going to be tied up with the Test Series this year. Siddle comes back. Uh, Harry Dixon, the young prospect, comes in. And Joe Clark from the Melbourne Stars is a really good recruit there. So I think they've recruited really well this, uh, this trade period, or whatever you want to call it in cricket. They lost Sam Harper, that's a bit of a blow. Andre Russell, Martin Guptill, although Guptill wasn't great in last year's tournament from memory. Uh, Matt Critchley, Akil Hussain, and uh, Corey at Roccicelli, who's gone to the Melbourne Stars. But overall, particularly with the introduction of both Clark and De Kock, um, I think that uh, that top order and middle order both some really hitting power. With There's also Sean Marsh, Fraser McGurk as well. He's been turning some heads in... Well, in the shield, he hit a pretty quick 100 the other day, and he hit something like a 29-ball century in the... Um, in the Marsh Cup. So I think he could be a bit of a breakout year. And there's, um, you know, Finch, some solid bowling options there, Mujib, Zampa, Kane Richardson, um, and yeah, Will Sutherland as well. So I think this is a really balanced team uh, from top to bottom. I don't think they'll lose too much in the way of availability. And therefore, I think there's a good chance the Renegades are pretty consistent this year. And finally, in first place, I'm going to have the Sydney Sixers, who again, I just think are a very, very strong team. And most importantly, probably don't have the uh, the availability issues. And I think that will be key in terms of producing a consistent season for them. But you've got Philippe at the top, James Vince, 
uh, Jordan Sill, Curtis Patterson, Moise, Moses Enriquez. Like these guys aren't really going to be pulled away. I think from this tournament, um, Tom Curran is their overseas player. You know, Steve Smith is going to play one game. Uh, we know that. I think that will be their first game on December eighth. Uh, but other than that, I think the, the squad depth that the Sydney Sixers have and the uh, the availability issues that they don't have is going to make them a formidable opponent again. And uh, I think they finished second last year during the regular season. So I think they'll back that up and be another consistently good team in BBL 13. So there you have it, guys. That is just my attempt at predicting the ladder. I know this is like an impossible task and uh, I'm still familiarizing myself again with the Big Bash and obviously with all the squad changes, it makes it tricky. But as always, I've had a crack. I uh, hope you're enjoying the cricket content. Let me know in the comments what your predictions are um, from first to eighth. And uh, yeah, I hope to see you guys in not only the first live stream of the year, but or I'm going to probably do uh, multiple live streams throughout the year. So thanks for watching. I appreciate the support. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.